Hi, I'm Jonathan Stein, and this is the ultimate guitar lesson for beginners. Let's get right to it. The first thing we're going to do is learn the names of the strings. At the same time, I'll show you how to tune your guitar with a clip-on tuner. A great way to help memorize the names of the strings is to make up an acronym. There are many out there, but the one that I like to use is Every Big Green Dinosaur Always Explodes. It's silly, but I think that makes it memorable. This acronym goes from the first string to the sixth string, like this. Every Big Green Dinosaur Always Explodes. Now, using this clip-on tuner, I will tune my guitar. First, you play the open string, then check the readout on the tuner, and adjust as necessary. Check that the readout matches the name of the string you are tuning. That's one place where knowing the names of the strings comes in handy. Now, let's tune the explodes or E string. The readout says D sharp. It means it's too low, so we need to tighten it like this. Tighten it until the arrow goes to the middle. There. Let's try one more. Let's tune the always or A string. The readout says A sharp. This time the note is too high. We have to lower it like this. There we go. So, number one, memorize the names of the strings. Number two, tune your guitar. Remember to tune your guitar every time you sit down to practice, so you'll be sounding your best. Next, let's quickly look at how to hold a guitar pick. Put the pick flat on your index finger, then close your thumb on top of it like this. Remember to make sure that no more than half of the pick is visible, for better control and stability. Now, let's talk rhythm. Let's grab our guitars and get ready to play. If you have some previous musical experience and already know about the different types of note durations, feel free to skip this section. First of all, in many styles of music, we count the beat in fours. It's called 4-4 four, four time. Four beats in every bar. This is a drum beat in 4-4 four, four time. We count it like this. 1, 2, 3, 4. I strongly recommend getting either a metronome, metronome app, or using a drum loop in something like GarageBand to help you practice. This way, you'll develop solid rhythm and you can easily gauge your progress by adjusting the tempo as necessary. As you get better, you will see that you can play things at faster tempos. For this exercise, I'm setting the tempo to 60 beats per minute. The first rhythm we'll learn is the whole note. It looks like this, and it sounds like this. It's a long note that begins on the first beat and lasts for four counts. Let's try it together. We'll play just the open 6th string or E string, so no left hand at this point. Here we go. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. So that's the whole note. Next is the half note. This note lasts for two beats, and we'll play it on the one and the three, like this. Let's try it together. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four.
Okay, next we have the quarter note. This note lasts one beat, so we play it on each beat like this. Let's try it together. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Lastly, let's learn the eighth note. There are two eighth notes in every beat, and we count them with ands like this. One and two and three and four and. All right, let's try it. One, two, three, four. One and two and three and four and. To finish off, we'll play all four rhythms in a row without stopping. Ready? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, and two, and three, and four, and. Great! Now, let's get our left hand into the action. This is a great exercise that works on coordination, dexterity, tone, and hand position all in one simple package. All of my students begin with it. Practice it every day for two weeks and you will see a dramatic improvement. On your left hand, your fingers are numbered one, two, three, four. For this exercise, we will start with our first finger on the first fret of the sixth string, also known as the E string. Put your fingertip on the string near but not on the metal fret. Press down and pick the string with your right hand. With your second finger, play the note on the same string, second fret. Now, play the note on the 3rd fret with your 3rd finger. And finally, with your 4th finger, play the note on the 4th fret. Play this several times on the 6th string to get comfortable with the pattern. Keep the thumb on your left hand pointing in the same direction as the other fingers and press down on the back of the guitar neck with the flat part of your thumb. Once you're feeling good about the pattern, you can try it on all six strings like this. When you're able to play the pattern on all six strings, you can then try it coming back down in reverse order, like this. To gauge your progress, try it with a metronome or beat. Set the tempo as slow as you need to to be able to follow it. You can choose any of the rhythms we just learned. The easiest would be to play whole notes, like this. I've set the tempo to 60 in this example. When it gets too easy, either speed up the tempo or try a faster note value like half notes, then quarter notes, 
then eighth notes. One last note on this exercise. Keep your eyes on your left hand at all times. Do not look at your picking hand. You will miss notes at first, but that's okay. Eventually, your right hand will memorize the distance between strings. Just try to keep your pick as close as possible to the strings at all times. Okay, now let's learn some chords. We'll start with E minor. Place your second finger on the fifth string or A string, second fret. Then, place your third finger on the fourth string or D string, also second fret, like this. Keep your thumb in the middle of the back of the neck. Now, strum all the strings, like this. Now, play all the strings separately to check if all the notes are sounding. If some of the notes sound funny, try taking your hand off for a second. Try it again. This time, press a little bit harder. Try changing the angle of your fingers slightly. Try lowering your thumb a bit more. Everyone's hand is different, so you need to find the position that works best for you. With a little bit of practice, you'll get there. Let's try another chord, the A chord. To get there from E minor, drop your second and third fingers both down one string, so they are now on the third and fourth strings, like this. Then, add your pinky on the second string or B string, second fret. All three fingers should now be in the second fret. Play the chord starting from the A string, like this. Now, play all the strings separately. Memorize the names and the shapes of the chords. The best way to practice them is to play them together in a chord progression. Let's play E minor, then A. I'm setting the tempo to 60. We will play one whole note on each chord and then repeat this pattern. One, two, three, four. Once whole notes get too easy, change to half notes like this. One, two, three, four. Then try quarter notes. One, two, three, Four. And finally, two eighth notes. One, two, three, four. When this gets too easy, just increase the tempo. That's it for the hard work. Now it's time for some fun. I always like to include at least a small bit of a song in my first lesson with all my beginners. Most of the time, we learn what's arguably the most famous guitar riff of all time. Smoke on the water. I don't know why, but everyone knows it, even little kids. It must be in our DNA. This is a simplified version of the riff, played all on the 6th string or E string. I have put the tab on the screen below. Tab is very easy to read. There are 6 lines and they represent the 6 strings of the guitar. The first string is on the top. The numbers are the frets where you place your fingers. 
There is no rhythm in tab, it's just to let you know where on the guitar to place your fingers. Use your ears to figure out the rhythm. Try to play it the way you hear it. Okay, let's play the song. Start by playing the open E or 6th string, which is written as 0. Then, play the 3rd fret and the 5th fret, also on the E string. 0, 3, 5. Then play 0, 3, 6, 5. 0, 3, 6, 5. Next, play 0, 3, 5 again. 0, 3, 5. And finish off with 3, 0. 3, 0. Altogether, it will sound like this. 0, 3, 5. 0, 3, 6, 5. 0, 3, 5, 3, 0. And that's it. You've learned your first song. Remember, when you begin learning an instrument, frequency is more important than duration when it comes to practicing. Practicing every day for 5 to 10 minutes is way better than practicing 2 or 3 times that every few days. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. If you want to know more, go to itcamefromthegarage.com.